Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Lego Batman Easter Egg and References video. Careful for spoilers if you haven't seen the movie yet. I'm not even going to try and do the Will Arnett intro. Movies should begin with scary titles. I can't do that gravelly voice really well. But there was a joke about every ridiculous Batman character, every movie, every TV show, anything you could possibly make fun of. This movie did that in every single line of dialogue. It was crazy. There were probably a ton of Easter eggs that I missed, but there's a new round of the Flash Ring giveaway. All you have to do to enter is be a subscriber and leave a Batman comment on this video. Here we go. There are about 50 of these, not including all the different characters from the Batman canon. There were some really ridiculous ones too. So number one, the plane hijacked at the beginning of the film is from MacGuffin Airlines. Just the idea that there's this plot device driving things forward that doesn't really mean anything. It's just something to get the plot to move forward. Two, the airplane is owned by Ferris Air, Carol Ferris, Star Sapphire, and girlfriend of Green Lantern, Hal Jordan, which showed up during the Justice League sequences. Number three, Commissioner Gordon's partner is named O'Hara, a reference to Chief O'Hara, played by Stanford Rep. I'm just going to go ahead and stop numbering these. I'm just going to list these because there's so many. Both Egghead and Condiment King, completely ridiculous Batman villains, but totally true to the series. So Condiment King showed up during the animated series. Egghead was played by Vincent Price on the classic TV show. They did a whole bunch of special Lego end cards for the DC TV shows, which I'll just play here. Batman, move your head. Killer Croc's line, I did something, is a reference, it's a bit of a dig at Killer Croc and Suicide Squad, who almost did nothing to service the plot. Doug Benson was the person voicing Bane. He did Dark Knight Rises Bane, but he also does that voice in real life all the time on his podcast, Doug Loves Movies. The Joker's line, Wanna Get Nuts, obviously a reference to Michael Keaton's Batman from the 89 film. When Joker asks Batman who your number one bad guy is and he starts talking about Superman, that's a dig at Batman v Superman. There's a sign for Batman Forever for the 1995 film that shows up. There's a building downtown called Shrek's Department Store, which is from Batman Returns, the second Michael Keaton film. In the Batcave, there's a lot of the Easter eggs from the Batcave in the comics. The giant T-Rex is sitting there. That's from the 1946 Batman comic, Dinosaur Island. The photo of Batman's parents taken in front of the Monarch Theater is also true to the comics. When Alfred is getting down on Batman for the different phases he goes through, they flash to every single Batman movie that's ever happened in Lego, with the exception of the Super Friends cartoon, the cartoon logo, the live-action Bat Dance from the 60s TV series, in the 1943 serial, the original Batman serial. They made Superman's Fortress of Solitude look just like the one in the Richard Donner films. There's a name drop for Bloodhaven when Barbara Gordon appears for the first time, home to Nightwing. There's an ad on the back of a magazine called Barris Automotive that's a hat tip to George Barris, the person who designed the Batmobile from the 60s TV series. The laundry truck that reads operated by Quinzel is actually a reference to Harley Quinzel, but then later it reads Phantom Zone, just a reference to Superman's Phantom Zone. There were a bunch of outfits, including Batman costume, Robin costumes that go all across the canon that the characters wore. When we see Dick Grayson, he's dressed just like 1960s Dick Grayson in that red shirt. The scene where Alfred lets Dick into the Batcave on purpose is very reminiscent of Vicki Vale being let into the Batcave on purpose. There was a Batman Beyond costume for everybody that's a fan of that series that showed up when they were doing the dressing montage. The glasses that Dick Grayson wears when he's dressed as Robin make him look just like the Carrie Kelly version of Robin, even though he's Dick Grayson. When they powered up the Batmobile, they say atomic batteries to power, turbines to speed. That's what they would say when they were powering up the Batmobile from the 60s TV series. When they go to the Fortress of Solitude, the doorbell rings the John Williams theme. That was so great. The banner on the Fortress of Solitude reads, 57th Annual Justice League Party. This year is the 57th anniversary of the Justice League, and it was the same thing for the Joker, too. He says this is our 70-plus anniversary. It's been 70-plus years since the Joker debuted in the comics. There were a bunch of dance party Easter eggs. Wonder Dog is the DJ, and they had a couple characters from the Challenge of the Super Friends show, Apache Chief and Black Vulcan in the background. When Batman turns on the Fortress of Solitude looking for crystals, throwing them, Marlon Brando's message comes on from the John Williams movies. Batman drops a Gleaming the Cube reference when Robin's trying to steal the Phantom Zone projector. 
He dumps his utility belt out as he's trying to enter the prison. They have a total recall x-ray machine where they have a fight. It's right out of that Schwarzenegger movie. The sheer number of villains that pour out of the Phantom Zone is ridiculous. So we have Voldemort, but you know that Alfred is being played by Ralph Fiennes, who played Voldemort in the Harry Potter movies. So you have two Voldemorts in the movie. You have Godzilla, you have King Kong, you have British robots. That got the biggest laugh out of me. I don't know why they weren't able to call them Daleks. Maybe it was a copyright reason. But they also had flying monkeys from The Wizard of Oz. Pretty much every genre villain that you could possibly imagine. There was even Jaws, which was a nice callback to the shark repellent from the 60s TV series. Oh look, it was useful. There's a sign for Penguin's Club, the Iceberg Lounge that shows up. The Gotham Gazette shows up. That's also where Vicki Vale worked during that Michael Keaton Batman film. They have a whole bunch of soda cola, which sounds weird, but it's just a fictional DC comic soft drink. That first bat suit that Alfred shows up in before he switches to his butler Batman costume is from the 1960s TV series. There is a huge Suicide Squad dig during the movie when Batman's in the prison and laughs at the idea of using criminals to fight other criminals. Then the Joker drops another Jack Nicholson reference. Where does he get all those wonderful toys? The Gremlins on the Wing is actually a reference to Twilight Zone William Shatner, which is hilarious to see them in the movie. This one's actually really obscure. Let me know if you guys picked up on the Jim Cotta reference. Is this really funny movie about someone who fights crime and is a badass with his gym skills. So he does a lot of high kicks, a lot of flips. It's just the most ridiculous movie ever. The Batman family that Batman is so afraid of putting together is actually a big thing in the comics. There's a lot more Robins, a lot more other people that wear Bat costumes that are part of the family now. But this was just one of the earliest versions of the Bat family. Robin almost puts on a Nightwing costume when he's talking about what would Batman do. Nightwing was the version of Robin that he became in the comics when they wanted to make him hardcore. He was growing up, they wanted to put him in Teen Titans, so they gave him a more hardcore costume, a more hardcore attitude. So when he's saying, I need to be like Batman, that's what that costume was all about. The really awesome one, you had to be listening really closely, but Two-Face in the movie is voiced by Billy D. Williams, who played Two-Face in the Michael Keaton Batman films, but never actually got to be Two-Face. He was only Harvey Dent. He never got acid in the face, so he never got to be that evil persona. And probably one of the funniest but most on-the-nose Easter egg references was the entrance password to the Batcave. Iron Man sucks, but just a dig at the fact that Iron Man's another billionaire in the comic book universe that uses his money to fight crime. So let me know in the comments what other Easter eggs did you guys find, but it was a great movie. I think as long as you understand that it's going to be ridiculous going into it, and I think it's a little more rewarding for longtime Batman fans just noticing an Easter egg in every single line of dialogue. It was crazy. I feel like I'm going to have to go back and see it again just to catch a couple more that I missed the first time. But that aside, I'm not planning on doing a big review video. I feel like this movie doesn't need it. You pretty much know what you're getting just based on the premise. It's gonna be ridiculous, but as long as you understand that, it'll be a lot of fun. So congratulations to the newest Flash Ring giveaway winner, Corey Thacker. Please private message me on the back end of my channel so I can get your contact details. What's gonna happen tomorrow is Walking Dead is back, so I'll post my new episode video. There'll be new Game of Thrones, so be sure to look out for that. While you wait for that to post, you can click here to catch up with all the crazy Marvel stuff that dropped last night for Infinity War. And you can click here for my latest Flash video. Thank you so much for watching. Everybody, let's high five. I'll see you guys in the next video.